Hi folks, uh, Dino again here for uh, GUE TV. I'm uh, with John Kendall uh, today. We're going to be um, hitting some highlights on photogrammetry and a little bit of information about the Mars and other things. And before we jump into the photogrammetry, John, I, listening to the backstory of the Mars, like the how it came to be, this this amazing warship that was built to crush everything like a like a Death Star. How did <laughs> yeah. it How did it end up on the bottom of the ocean in its second day of battle? What was that about? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story. This that um, back in the the, the mid 1560s, when when Mars was there as this massive, great big warship, twice as big as anything the other navy. Uh, she was also the only ship in the Swedish navy who could sail against the wind. So. <laughs> The second day of battle, kind of all looking good for the Swedes, they obliterated the Danes the night before, and then suddenly the wind changed. Uh, the wind's blowing against the Swedish fleet and behind the Danish fleet, and now you've got Mars as the only ship able to go into the wind, whilst the rest of her fleet is being pushed further and further back, and 32 Danish ships come and surround her. And, you know, that kind of point in time, you can be as big as you like, but there are 32 others, <laughs> you, 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 32 you to that. 1 against the not good odds, not are there? Not no, good no, odds. No. I, I wouldn't take that bet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, was, it a, was it a slow process for her to sink, or what happened? with? Like, how did she come to, yeah, to the bottom? So um, she was basically, she was disabled. The, 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 the other ships surrounded her. They, they hit her with like almost 200 cannonballs. She was still afloat at this point, but the, the Admiral basically had to surrender the ship. And so she was captured, but she was on fire. Uh, the, the crew, the, well, the officers were taken off, off, off of Mars. Danish crew came on to try and loot her to find the war treasury. And whilst they're doing this, the forward magazine caught fire and exploded. Uh, blew the bow completely off the wreck, blew the main mast 400 feet up into the sky like a rocket, and she sank. I mean, she sank quick. Right. Yeah, at that point, that was it. Mars yeah. was gone. This big cloud of steam from all the cannon, the heat of the cannons. Um, it said that the, the ghost of the, the, the ship kind of disappeared up into the sky. Uh, they, were quite, they were quite poetic about this massive loss of life and bloodshed back in those days. That, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it sounds like quite a, quite a scene. Um, uh, so just tell us a little bit about the dive site for people that don't know. Just an indication like a, you know, a regular, an everyday if you want to call it that, photogrammetry dive to the Mars. <laughs> what's, what's, what's that entail? Uh, temperatures, depths, yeah. run times, that sort of thing. What do you okay, expect? yeah, no worries. Um, so Mars is about an hour, just over an hour steam away from the harbour that we're working out of. Pretty, pretty simple ride out on the boat. Um, but then we get in the water. Um, at the surface, it's not too bad. It's about 14 Celsius. I say not too bad. Yeah, that, 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 that's okay temperatures. But you drop down to below about 20 meters, 21 meters, and it's now two degrees Celsius. And we go through this, this what we call the freezer zone, from about 20 meters down to about 65 meters and in this two, two and a half degree water. Yeah. It's beautiful visibility, like forever. You can see forever, but it's dark because there's no natural light there, and it's freezing cold. And then as you come down, you come down, you hit this kind of wispy fog layer. And it's, we think it's a, a, a very dilute hydrogen sulfide, which gives a kind of white appearance. And it's just like this, the fog. Um, and you hit the fog, and the visibility drops to about two meters, and the temperature goes up to four degrees. Which is kind of odd. It's not, it's not usual to hit slightly warmer temperatures on the bottom. It's also not really that sensible to say four degrees is warm. Well, uh, so we're on the bottom now? <laughs> so now degrees. we're on the bottom. So and it's, well, on, yeah. the, on the upside, you have doubled the temperature in moving we, from that yeah, into the wreck, yeah. so that's good. Advantage of Celsius over Fahrenheit, but yeah. <laughs> um, um, and you kind of come through this layer, it's foggy, it's milky, and then the next thing you see is the deck, well, the deck, the side of the hull with these cannon ports that just appears in front of you. And this is massive timbers. Um, you're at about 72 meters at this at this point on the top of the wreck the bottom's about 75 um, and you're now in the time capsule um, the kind of the fog almost gives it that mm -hmm. i've now gone back in time moment right. it's you know, like the, the kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds quite romantic um so a challenging one then uh, obviously yeah. at that depth and and that th so what's a what's a regular how much time do you get on the bottom and what's the total rt yeah so uh, we're normally looking Beginning of the, the project, we normally run at about 30 minutes bottom time. By the end, we're looking at 40 to 45. As people have got acclimatized to the temperature, worked out the, the dive a bit better. Total run times, we try to keep them below three hours because you know, we are a fair way offshore. It is cold. We're doing some fairly extreme dive. And you know, we don't want to have weather changes that suddenly start messing us up. So we want to keep it to within three hours total run time in the water. Yeah. Yep, sounds good. Um, uh, so looking at thinking now let's move on to the sort of subject of photogrammetry and yep. and and like you can get a reasonable uh, look at a wreck uh, you know from multi-beam sonar mm -hmm. and photo mosaic is good you know yep. for, for, for a snapshot uh, that does allow you to see the wreck 
as you could never see it in real life, but photogrammetry is that and then even more, isn't it? So yeah. just for folks who are uh, not quite up to speed, then just talk about that little process uh, shortly of just uh, how you go about that with the photogrammetry. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, you're right. The multi-beam gives us a, a very almost, well, it's a two-dimensional look with different colors for depths. Um, the, the photo mosaicing is amazing. I mean, it looks superb, but there's an artistic element to it because you have to decide bit, which bits of the pictures to cut, which bits to bend, which bits to ignore. Uh, whereas photogrammetry is real 3D. So basically, not only is it you're getting a picture of it from above, you're getting a full ability to move around it digitally, look inside it, look under it. Well, if we can get there to capture the data, you can then look at it later on the computer. Yes. And it does. Literally, it gives another dimension to, to underwater imagery. We can now have a manipulatable model uh, that we can look around. You zoom in, you see all this detail. And the nice thing with photogrammetry is pretty much if the data works, then what you've got is accurate. Like when it, when it glitches, it's really obvious that it's glitched. Right. But otherwise, it's a really nice, accurate way of getting this data. And certainly much better than tape measures and compasses, oh, yeah. well, which is how we used to do it in the olden days. We've, we've all done that. Well, yeah. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours and hours and hours. And when you've only got 40 minutes per dive to try and do this stuff, yeah. you know, spending 20 minutes laying out tape measures to, to mark off where, how big a, you know, a beam that's, I don't know, 20 meters long is, that seems to me to be a bit of a waste yeah, of time. It's, it's a bit tiresome. It's <laughs> yeah. a bit tiresome, yeah. Um, so for folks who are interested in learning about uh, photogrammetry yeah. and, and if they've got something that they want to uh, to take this technology to, how do they go about that? What's the best thing to do? Yep. So the nice thing about photogrammetry is it doesn't have to be super complex. You know, what we're doing on Mars, thousands of photos, super deep, cold water. It's a flagship project. You know, it's about really doing a very good job on that. But it doesn't need to be that complex. You can do it with a, a power lens or another action camera. You can do it with whatever camera system you've already got. And it's just about taking a decent number of photos of the wreck or whatever you're looking at. Now, there is a big learning curve on this. Now, I started this about five or six years ago. And he, he had a full head of hair at that time, <laughs> folks. He was flowing like a hippie, and look at him yeah, now. Just, no, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> it's not true, but <laughs> I, I've lost what little I had. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, there's a learning curve. There's a very steep learning curve, because you go in, you go, I can do this. You, you, you use your smartphone, you, I, you I do a thing on the, on the yeah. desk, and it's like, I can do this, easy. You've done a model on the surface, no problem. Go underwater, here we go, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the Mars on this. Click, 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 you get out, and then you've got nothing. <laughs> Computer say no. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, there's this learning curve. And this is why GUE um, asked me and, uh, to develop a program. Uh, a class for teaching people the basics of photogrammetry. It's a four-day program, it's a few dives, it's a load of topside stuff, we go through the processing, we go through the photography. You don't have to be a photographer. Right. Actually, non-photographers tend to find it easier. Because oh, I'm a chance after all. <laughs> it's, I like to call it photography for engineers, because I can give you a cheat sheet. Yep. Basically, I can give you the cheat sheet, you follow the rules, you'll get a model. Right. Um, and that's the awesome thing with photogrammetry. There's no element you, know, you don't need to be artistic you don't need to have that that eye for a beautiful shot you just need to follow the rules do what do be, what you need to do be methodical exactly um, be methodical try to avoid making mistakes and then you know what you put it in the computer you hit the button a model comes out it's, it's kind of, I like to make it sound simple, and it is, um, as long as you follow the rules. When, it, when yeah. it works, yeah. When it works. Okay, and so um, so this class, uh, how, yeah. how, how do people go about uh, getting the class organized? How do people go about getting the class organized? Yeah, um, so um, simplest thing is to, there's a couple of photogrammetry instructors on listed on our website, get in touch with any of them, and um, the class is just under $1,000 a head which is pretty reasonable. So it's, it sounds like that, that's well worth the effort to avoid the headaches <laughs> you've gone through in the last five years. I'd pay that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. Five years ago when I do my first models, if I could have just slipped someone a grand and suddenly had that information in my head, yes. easy money. Yeah, that would have been an easy thing to have done to, to, to really help me get over that hump. Um, he's, on, he's only 26 years old, people, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, uh, is there a minimum number of students? Uh, um, what do you need to run the course? Yeah, so the class has a maximum of four, a minimum of two, but really three or four is the right uh, number. And partly this is because we've built more than just photogrammetry into the, cl uh, 
into the class. Um, we're doing off-board lighting, the team element, getting the whole team together to build the model. And um, that, you know, with only two people, it, it's very easy and you don't really need to do the communication. With four, it's really cool. We've got a lot of lights, we can do all that stuff, and it's another skill that you can add in. Right. So, yeah. so it's more like a real project. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. exactly that. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to make it a mini project on the class. So you're actually making a model of something that you yourself are interested in. Yeah. So you know, most of the time we come to the, to the class. So the instructor will travel to the class to, to do something fun. Yeah. Sounds like fun, diving with a purpose. Yeah. Uh, look, there's everything that uh, you wanted to know about photog photogrammetry, but we're too afraid to ask, but that's okay, because it's out there. So from uh, John and myself, uh, here for GUE TV at DEMA, uh, it's goodbye for now and we'll see you next time. Thanks, John. No worries. Thanks, Cheers. Team.